In the day's other news, it was another tense and violent day in Venezuela, with crowds in the street once again. Opposition leader Juan Guaido again called for pressure to oust the Maduro regime, but the military gave no signs of heeding that call. William Brangham has our report. It was all quiet in Caracas this morning. But as the hours passed, crowds again filled some Caracas neighborhoods. There were new clashes and more tear gas as protesters confronted police. Opposition leader Juan Guaido yesterday had called for a military and civilian uprising against President Nicolas Maduro. The U.S. and dozens of other nations accused Maduro of stealing the last election and have demanded he step down. And Guaido was out again this afternoon. We are going to continue to be in the streets until Venezuela is free. Yes, we can. Hours later, Maduro rallied his own supporters and vowed not to step down. Only the people can appoint and only the people can remove from office. It will not be the bullets or rifles that will ever impose a new president. U.S. Special Envoy to Venezuela Elliot Abrams says Guaido had been negotiating with top military officials to join him, but that it's still unclear why those talks fell through. It may be that Maduro uh, and the Cuban intelligence people who surround him found out and managed to head this off. It may be that, you know, moving from negotiations in private to actually making decisions in the streets, people uh, lost their courage. I hope that you Secretary of State Mike Pompeo claimed Maduro was ready to flee the country yesterday, but that his Russian allies prevented it. The Venezuelan president denied that. Decía Mike Pompeo. Mike Pompeo said that Maduro has a plane ready to go to Cuba to flee, and the Russians took him off the plane and forbade him to leave the country. Mr. Pompeo, please be serious. I hope that Today, can. Pompeo spoke by phone with Russian can. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. The State Department says the secretary warned the Russians that their actions in Venezuela are destabilizing. Moscow says Lavrov responded in kind, warning of, quote, grave consequences for any aggressive U.S. actions. Special Envoy Abrams says Russia's support is about more than just propping up Maduro. It's primarily a matter of expanding Russian influence and kind of jabbing a finger in the eye of the United States uh, in the Western Hemisphere. Meanwhile, Pompeo left open that U.S. military action in Venezuela is still possible. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham. In Charlotte, North Carolina, police are still trying to determine a motive in Tuesday's shooting attack on a college campus. A former student, Tristan Terrell, allegedly opened fire in a classroom at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Two students were killed and four others wounded. Terrell is now charged with murder. Florida may soon be arming more of its school teachers. The Republican-led state house gave final approval today to expanding a so-called guardian program. It allows teachers to carry guns with school district approval. The bill was a response to last year's Parkland High School shooting that left 17 people dead. The Republican governor is expected to sign it into law. There were new questions in Minneapolis today after a former police officer who is black was convicted of murder in the death of an unarmed white woman. Activists suggested that Mohammed Noor, a Somali American, was found guilty Tuesday because of his race. Prosecutors denied it. The city's mayor had his own message. What matters most for Minneapolis is how we respond in the days and in the weeks ahead. Our city must come together. Not for any single person, not for any single entity or organization. Not for any reason beyond our love for each other and the values that hold us together. The victim, Justine Damon, was fatally shot in 2017 after she called 911 to report a possible crime. Noor said he thought she had a gun. His sentencing is set for June 7th. A British judge today sentenced WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange to 50 weeks in prison for skipping bail in 2012. He spent seven years holed up at the Ecuadorian embassy in London before being expelled and arrested last month. Assange still faces a fight over extradition to the U.S. on charges that he conspired to break into Pentagon computers. 
workers around the world mark this May Day with marches, rallies, and in some cases, violence. In France, so-called yellow vest protesters clashed with Paris police in riot gear. Officers fired tear gas, and some of the protesters smashed cars. In Russia, some 100,000 workers marched in Moscow in a state-approved event. Dozens of anti-government protesters were arrested elsewhere. And across Asia, thousands massed in countries from the Philippines to South Korea, calling for better working conditions. Back in this country, the Trump administration is asking Congress for another $4.5 billion in emergency funding for the southern border. That is on top of more than $14 billion already requested. The administration says much of the new money would pay for aid and shelter space for a surge of migrant families from Central America. The U.S. Federal Reserve held its key short-term interest rate steady today and would not commit to cutting rates later this year. The central bank cited signs of economic health and low inflation. Chairman Jerome Powell suggested that, for now, a change in rates either way is unlikely. We've done a deep dive on economic and financial conditions uh, at the, in the United States and around the world and thought about our policy, and we do think our policy stance is appropriate right now. We don't, we don't see a strong case for moving in either direction. The decision came despite public pressure from President Trump urging the Fed to cut its rates. A rally on Wall Street fizzled after the Fed's statement on rates staying where they are. The Dow Jones Industrial Average ended up losing 162 points to close at 26,430. The Nasdaq fell 45 points and the S&P 500 dropped 22. Still to come on the news hour, Facebook announces plans for a major shift in its core business. The next report in our series on freshman members of Congress, this time during a House recess. And the administrator of NASA on plans for the U.S. to go back to the moon.